called Revelations, you know what I'm saying? Revelations 12. At birth, I was given the name. Peace. Here we go. Another day from the death of apocalypse. Dogs to God's entertainment. With a quick word of reflection from our podcast in this season, Walking the Road to Recovery, Nine Steps in Motion. Let me reiterate that we are on a mission to become the number one most safe place to come, to sit at the desk, to deal with the hearts, minds, and souls of those who desire to rid themselves from drug abuse. That's the mission. Listen, let me say that Allah has already proven to me that his blessings suffice. (laughs) He is sufficient for me. You know what I'm saying? And this is why we are on a mission of service to him and service to humanity using our own life experience extracting the wealth that's in our own life experience and using it to do just that serve Allah and serve humanity right now we are at the ninth step Nine is a number of completion. So we're about to complete a certain phase of our introduction to walking the road to recovery, nine steps in motion. The ninth step is stay relevant. Coming up out of drug addiction, see through drug addiction, what is the relevancy? You know what I mean? That that is pure self self destruction. That is taking ourselves to hell. <laughs> or let's let's just eliminate spookism. That is a living hell. You understand? That is a living hell. You know, but the scriptures say that Jesus descended into hell huh before he ascended uh, all right we ain't gonna preach like that <laughs> but stay relevant you know from my perspective from my vantage point we are going to share with you from my frame of reference one of the best ways I should say the best way to stay relevant. Now, you can take it or leave it. I'm gonna give you three things to check out and to look at. And from these three things, you can go back as far as you need to, to bring it all the way up to this day and time. But there are, the first thing is, the time and what must be done lecture series by the Alma Miss Lewis Farrakhan. Clear. See, from my vantage point, the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan is Allah's timepiece. He is Allah's, uh, he's being used by Allah to help everyone all of humanity to see and know the time and what must be done so we can study those lecture series and then look in the mirror of truth to place ourselves in this dispensation of time which we believe is the fullness of time which is the fulfillment which is the establishment of the hereafter, which is now for my followers as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us. So, the time and what must be done, 
Then we're going to jump to July 4th, 2020, the criterion. This is another tool for us to be able to study, to look into the mirror of truth to determine our relevancy in this dispensation of time. And then the third one would be from February the 27th, 2020, the Swan Song. Savior's Day 20, I'm sorry, did I say 2020? 2022, the Swan Song is the third thing or is the third uh, study <laughs> that we want to share for us to be able to place ourselves in uh, in time to determine whether we are being relevant and why this is so important why this is such an important thing to consider on a daily consistent basis is you know a lot of people I don't know the statistics because I didn't look it up but there are many who laid down last night who did not get up this morning because they returned to Allah. Now, Allah, from my vantage point, will be justified, you know, to take my soul at night. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If, especially if I'm not conscious of justifying my existence. Why are you here? Why are you here? You're here to serve a purpose, a divine purpose. If that's not my consciousness on a daily consistent basis, then Allah is justified. He's justified regardless because he is the all in all. You know, now emphatically he's justified to take me out of here if I'm not conscious of making this life relevant so that's my that's my quick spill <laughs> on this subject matter but the ninth step we are ready to move into it with our brother Hashim Hakeem he's gonna take us through the ninth step walking the road to recovery nine steps in motion tune in peace chapter nine stay relevant relevant means appropriate to the current time period or circumstances of contemporary interest while earnestly striving to go through these steps it is very important to embrace the mindset that you are relevant you have to know that you are here for a reason. The fact that I'm able to share my testimony with you in this book means that even at my worst state of addiction, at the lowest and most despicable point of my life, there was a purpose. Of course, I didn't realize it at the time, and I'm sure that's the case for you. But it speaks to the fact that your purpose is bigger than you. Everything in the universe was divinely created with a purpose. The fact that you exist means that you are here to fulfill a purpose that was divinely ordered. For this reason, know that you are relevant. Stay relevant. Stay. Remain in a specified state or position. Remain appropriate to the current time. Hold your position in feeding humanity with the high moral standard in time, where famine and pestilence is overcoming the world. This is the attitude taken and documented in this journey. Of course, there is so much more that can be said about this journey. There are so many more stories of ups and downs that I had to face in this walk, but we just wanted to lay out principles and steps that could be understood and used by anyone reading this writing. The desire is to take my real life experience and use it to serve Allah and serve humanity. In this way, I consider myself as making an attempt to be relevant. 
It is my prayer that whoever is struggling with drug abuse or any other addiction and reads this writing is able to walk up this road to a successful recovery. Not for me to receive any vain glory, but only to give all praises to the Most High for blessing us to share this information. The more your mind becomes clear, the more relevant you become to yourself. Throughout these steps, the focus has been on the mind and in the mirror. And everything outside of the mind and the mirror has a role to play in this journey as well. However, the mind is the focus because the mind is in control. The body will do only what the mind suggests. So by this time in the walk to recovery, the knowledge that you have gained about yourself will aid you in the process of being relevant. Your purpose has its own fingerprint. There is a specific reason that God had in mind when he willed you into existence. So a key aspect of the journey to recovering is aligning your mind with your creator to discover what he intends for your life. The more that you do this, the more you will see the hand of God in your life. He was there all the time, intervening in your affairs and gently guiding you along. Like never before, the time and condition requires that we make our lives meaningful and bring them in accord with what God has intended. As this book is being written, the world is in a pandemic. Famine is on the horizon. There seems to be a real force causing human beings to determine whether or not we are justifying our very existence. It's either that or we are just living life totally oblivious to a universal shaking and awakening to the law of cause and effect. This law has always been in effect. It just seems to be working at a higher rate of speed than it has throughout the generations, in my opinion. Time and circumstances have put me in touch with the importance of bringing this information from my heart and mind to the pages of this book in hopes that it will help me to maintain relevance in such a critical time. Our journey together through this book contributes to each of our relevance. Through this book, the Creator has connected us in the path of this struggle to show forth His power to work through human beings to bring about positive change. By grace, this lines up with the universal change that's taking place and eternal purposefulness. Congratulations. You have successfully gone through the nine steps in motion that have been laid out in this book. I pray that this information is internalized and practiced on a daily basis. The next chapter in this book is a brief summary and a quick snapshot of my walk through the life that this book is born out of, up to this point in my life. However, let me draw a conclusion for this phase of the journey. Conclusion. Prior to starting this book, my mindset has been on being relevant. I want to speak to you from the perspective that you are taking these steps seriously. There is a change taking place inside of you. Step two helps to develop a true sense of love for self in a rational mathematical way. You know, one plus one equals two. At this point, I'm not talking to a drug addict. In fact, if you understand this material correctly, I never was talking to a drug addict. By circumstances, we become other than ourselves. It's just a matter of time and under the right circumstances that we will realize that we have offered ourselves to the wickedness of this world. However, we are divine creatures who must come up into the knowledge and power of our divinity. When we are able to do this, we become relevant. The creator, the higher power, or whatever you choose to call this force is the contemporary interest. Humanity is clearly faced with circumstances never witnessed to this magnitude ever in history. By the time you get to this point, I am concluding that you have a much clearer understanding of yourself. I am affirming that you have a better love for yourself. I am faithful that you are comfortable with making an attempt to move full speed ahead, walking the road to recovery. I am praying that you are getting more comfortable with getting rid of the old and welcoming the new you. In all of this, the most important connection is the inward connection. This is the main focus of each step in this writing. Your first reading of this book may get you to a certain point in this process. You may have to read it again to get further along. 
Once the information in this book transfers from your head to your heart, you are well on your way. Most of what's in this book entered my mind long before it entered my heart. It wasn't until it entered my heart that it began to work. The heart pumps the life blood. The brain is like the engine in your car. But if you don't have fluid flowing through that engine, it's going to blow. I remember talking to a coworker back in the day who felt comfortable telling me that she was struggling with crack addiction. At the time, I was struggling with crack myself. However, I had been back in the church for a while and I learned how to say some powerful things. So I began to talk to her about some of the spiritual principles that are in this writing. A few weeks later, she thanked me. I'm wondering for what? She said, through those talks that you have given me, I have not smoked crack in two weeks. I was happy for her. And in my mind, I said, well, damn. I have been smoking crack ever since I've been ministering to her. The knowledge was in my head, but it had not transferred into my heart. The information went straight to her heart and benefited her. The time is now to embrace these steps so that it helps you. And in your ability to connect with others, you can turn around and help someone else. How many generations are you connected to? Are you in regular communication with the generation that came before you? I have found that typically, when older people begin to talk, the younger people begin to scatter. I, however, am usually one who would sit there and listen. I am fascinated by the stories of the old. And there are so many jewels in conversations with the elderly. What I have found in my experience is that regardless of their upbringing, the elderly have a lot of useful information that can guide one's present walk in life. The same goes with the young. What's fascinating to me about communicating with the young is that oftentimes, because everything is all new to them, they speak as if it's all new to you. This is where we have to be careful and skillful in our communication. How we respond to them can make or break the connection. Everyone wants to be validated, and no one wants to talk to a know-it-all. Here's the big one. What about the generation that belongs to you? When you walk into a room full of all the above, is your presence welcomed, or do they all begin to scatter? Either is all right. Whether they welcome you or scatter, it gives you an opportunity to evaluate yourself to determine whether or not your approach to life is relevant to the time and circumstances of your surroundings. Today is your day. The time is now. You know where you're going, and you are grateful for another day and opportunity to reach your destination. Understand that showing gratitude is in what you do, not in what you say. Thank you for getting to this point in this writing. You are now walking the road to recovery. And you are going through the nine steps in motion. Walking because it never stops. In motion because you must not quit.